Hello everyone, welcome back to the final proper episode of my Football Manager 22 save with Derby County. Now since you were last with us, we officially secured promotion to the Premier League. If you do go on to enjoy today's video though, please make sure you drop a like on it. If you could try and hit 15 likes for the final episode, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are nearly at 200 subscribers, so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already. Since you were last with us then, we had a 3-1 defeat away to Watford. A 4-1 win at home to Birmingham, a 2-0 win away to Bristol City, a 3-2 win at home to Blackburn, a 1-0 win away at Millwall and a 1-0 defeat at home to Brentford. We have our final two games in today's episode. We have Norwich away and Stoke at home. As I said, we have already been promoted officially to the Premier League. We just need to try and confirm that title. Now, we can confirm it in this match against Norwich. We pretty much were always going to go up uh, you know, with how the season was going, I was always confident we were going to get promoted, but it's whether we're going to win the title or not. That is what I was more interested in showing you guys. We've made some signings for the next season. What I think I'm going to do is I might do like a 24-hour stream over on my Twitch link is down in the description down below of the Premier League save and then upload that, maybe the highlights on to this channel. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you follow me on Twitch to see the whole save because the Premier League is going to be tough. This team is nowhere near good enough for the Premier League. Uh, I think they've given us about £30 million to spend, but for now we've got to focus on this match against Norwich. Pick up the three points there. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe and I shall see you all once I've picked the team for this match against Norwich. Here we have it then. This is the team that I'm going to be using for the penultimate game of this save. We've got Di Gregorio starting in goal. A back four of Sessignon, Eduardo, Clark and Byrne. A midfield two of Bird and Bielik. Unlandulu starts on the right. Joswiak starts on the left. And Sibley is in behind Rodrigo Moniz. Couple tired players. Couple players recovering from injury as well. Since you were last with us. So the bench isn't the strongest. Troy Parrott's still on there. Already got 10 goals for us and he's started two or three matches. He's been absolutely ex excellent for us. He's rarely missed a chance. So we've got to try and get him or Moniz back on a permanent basis next season. We definitely need to get Moniz back because he's nearly at 35 goals for us now. He could easily hit 40 in these next two matches if we create a decent amount of chances for him. This game is also on TV. They've got a very strong side out there. He's a very good team. Pookie in the championship is always going to score goals. So we've got to keep an eye on him. In this match, we just need to start well, get an early goal, and then I think if we win this match, we secure the title, or maybe we need to win and Barnsley need to lose. I'm not really too sure. I mean, who would think, if you think about right now, in real life next season, the top two is going to be Derby and Barnsley in the championship. You just wouldn't think like that at all. That's not a great start, though, as Todd Cantwell puts the host in front two minutes in. Imagine we bottle this. Because we do actually really need to win this match. So if he could wake up a little bit and not do that. Granted, I know we've got a couple injuries at the moment. But that is not an ideal start at all. Barnsley are not playing right now. So the pressure is on us to win. Because we don't know how well they're doing. If they win their match now, they will go above us. So we have to win this match. Come on. Let's get a goal back before half time. I mean, we're nearly 20 minutes in. We've not even had a shot yet. We're getting absolutely dominated in terms of possession. I mean, their formation kind of balances against ours. Ball comes in there from Cantwell. Z Zimmerman heads over the bar. Not a great start from Izzy. 25 minutes in, still yet to register a shot. You know, I'm going on attacking already because what we're doing right now simply isn't working. We'll tell them to get the ball into the wide areas. Maybe we need to get Troy Parrott on at half time. Just to, I mean, we're not really creating chances for him, for anyone to convert. So, yeah, I don't really know what we're going to do right now. We've only really got Ben Arthur on the bench. He's going to be retiring at the end of the season, which is why we couldn't sell him in January or loan him out. Joswiak on the ball here then. What can he do with it? He goes into Bird, cuts inside, he looks for that long ball into Unlundulu, in on goal, shoots, puts it wide again. See, the problem with Unlundulu is he cannot finish. He genuinely needs about six chances before he scores a goal. We've had one shot all half, and that was our only little half chance. I mean, it's a good chance he's just got to score, though, and he doesn't, he doesn't even hit the target. Absolutely terrible half of football. And I tell you what, we're going to get Louis Sibley off. He has not affected the game. Uh, the way that I would like. We're going to get Troy Parrott on. I mean, Spurs were fuming that I'm not playing him at advanced forward, but he does much better. As a pressing forward, to be honest with you, we're going to give him some encouragement as well. Change had to be made. Unlandula puts the ball in there. It's cleared. It comes to Bird. He finds Byrne. Very narrow, obviously, with him playing as an inverted wing back. Bielik now finds Eduardo. He goes in to Matt Clark. Not really got much in the way of option. He finds Byrne, though. Goes into Bielik. Good play this from us. Plays a 1-2. Bielik looking over the top here for Joswiak. Bit of space. Gets the ball into the box. Unlundulu heads it back across. Moniz is there. Joswiak now. Unlundulu! And just as I was criticising him for his poor finishing, he pops up with a goal. It's Norwich 1 at Derby County 1. Because of the goal difference, though, we still need to win this match. So we need to go now and get another one. Norwich just simply could not deal with... 
our attacking threat there. It's Joswiak with great play, puts a good ball in. Unanduli wins the header. Moniz with the first time ball into Joswiak. He puts it across. Norwich is sleeping. And Unanduli is there at the back post to tap in for his fourth goal for Derby County. Not really affected the season as much as what Troy Parrott has done, but he's got a very important goal for us there. And it does re, re instate our three point gap at the top of the table. We still need to go and get another one now. And I'm looking at the bench. There's not really much in the way of an option there. I'll tell you what, we'll take Sessegnon off and we're going to bring Buchanan on as a, an attacking wing-back to hopefully get him higher up the pitch. We also want to get on um, maybe Beck Sorensen for Eduardo. He's looking a little bit tired. I mean, it's not an ideal change to make when you need a goal, swapping your centre-backs, but in terms of fitness, we don't really have much in the way of options off the bench. We don't really want to bring a Banaf or a Marida onto the pitch, to be honest with you. We'll give them some more encouragement. 20 minutes to go. We've just not really created all too much, to be honest. We'll tell them to put some low balls into the box. We'll tell them to get the overlaps on. Not necessarily play into the wide areas, though. Um, yeah, come on. 10 minutes to go. We're going to go very attacking. We still need to win the match. They've changed to a 4-2-3-1. They're definitely going more attacking as well. Final bit of encouragement. Not really too much has happened in this match, which is not really ideal. This does mean, as it stands, it's going to be going down to the final game of the season. We're really not going to see another highlight at all, are we? Full time, Norwich won at Derby County. Well, not ideal, to be honest. If Barnsley win their game in hand, they go top of the league. Um, yeah, uh, we're not going to thrash them. I'm going to point the finger. I don't like what I've just seen from the team. I mean, it's not a bad point in the context of the season uh, away at Norwich. You know, they're a very good side, but we needed to win that match. We've just got to hope that Barnsley don't win their match. I don't know who they're meant to be playing. Is there a way for us to look at the fixtures? Surely there's got to be a way. If we have a look at Barnsley and go to their schedule, they are playing tomorrow against Swansea at quarter past five. They're on TV for the last two games as well. So hopefully Barnsley don't win that match. Um, yeah, it's not until quarter past five tomorrow. So I'll let you know the result of that game. It's not the perfect news, but it's the best news we could have probably wished for, to be honest with you. Swansea Barnsley finishing a nil-nil draw, meaning we still probably need to win just to make sure. But, I mean, the pressure is on Barnsley now. All we really need is just to score a scrappy goal. I mean, I completely forgot who we're playing, to be honest with you. We are playing Stoke. Now, they're in a playoff push at the moment. Can they actually get into the playoffs? Um, no, they can't. There's no, so maybe they might be on the beach. They might be on holiday already. So fingers crossed for our sake. And we also need to get back to winning ways. You know, I think we've only won one of our last four games or something like that. So it needs to be a win against Stoke. But it's fantastic news that Barnsley were unable to beat. Swansea in the end. So let's get into this match then against Stoke. Here we have it then. This is the team that I'm going to be using for the final game of this season. We've got a couple injuries since we were last with us. Hatton Banatha ended up uh, doing a calf strain, so he's going to be out uh, for this match. We also had Christian Bielik get a groin strain as well, so he's going to be out for a couple more weeks. The worst one was Eduardo. He's picked up a two to three month calf muscle injury, which is not ideal at all. I mean, I don't really think... He's not really in my plans, to be honest with you, for next season. We obviously brought him in on a free transfer. He's done very well for us, but he is rapidly on the decline. So I think, I mean, I mean, I think a lot of these players will be out of the door, to be honest. I'm only really looking at maybe Bird, Sibley, and Sessignon and Clark, potentially, who I really want to be here next season. The rest I'm not really too bothered about. Obviously, I'd like to keep players like Jason Knight, Boo Cannon, because they have some good potential. But the team is Di Gregorio in goal, a back four of Sessignon, Beck Sorensen, Clark, and Boo Cannon. Knight and Bird start in the midfield. Knight's not the fittest. He's been recovering as well from an injury, but it's either him or Fran Marida. So we're going with an injured Jason Knight. Sibley moves back out onto the right. Joswiak is on the left, and Daniel Johnson is in behind Rodrigo. Moniz, we absolutely have to win just to make sure. Unfortunately, we won't be getting 100 points this season, which is what I was looking for. Oh, wait, can we? Are we on 97 points on 96? I'm not really too sure. Actually, we'll have a look in a moment. We'll tell them this is a match we should be winning. We are obviously on television as well. We've won our last three straight matches, so fingers crossed we can make it another three points. Rodrigo Moniz gets us underway, and we're going to see a highlight very early on in this match. Sessegnon on the ball. He goes down line to Sibley. He plays it a 1-2 with Daniel Johnson. He's back with Sibley on this right-hand side. Can he get an early ball into the box? He cuts it back for Jason Knight. Ball comes in, cleared away by Hernandez. Hernandez, only as far as Max Bird, who goes out wide to Buchanan. We know he can cross the ball into the box. Can he work some space? He gets the ball in towards the back post. Cleared away by Wilmot, I think that was. And Baba wins the ball back, but it's a good tackle from Jason Knight. Early press from him. Can he get a ball into the box? He cuts it back to Sibley. Ball comes in. Moniz is there. He's onside, is it? Oh, is the, li the linesman's got his flag up. The linesman has got his flag up. I mean, it's a perfect start. Unfortunately, Moniz is just offside. So the goal isn't going to count. But we're showing it's really easy to cut Stoke City open there. 
So fingers crossed we can do a little bit more of that. Bird on the ball here, carrying it forward. He finds Rodrigo Moniz, turns and plays the ball out wide here to Joswiak. Recently lost his place to Faraguia, so he needs to show why he wants to be staying into this side. Sibley on the ball, clips it in. Moniz is there. This time he hits the post. He's offside again. But that's two really early chances there for Rodrigo Moniz. Unfortunately, both times he has been offside. So we need to wake up a little bit to that. Sorensen with a good header and he finds Sibley. He goes down the line to Daniel Johnson. Can he get a ball into the box? A little bit of lag. Sessignon finds Knight who finds Johnson into the penalty area. Can he get a shot off? He does. Oh, what a goal. Daniel Johnson back from injury. Back scoring goals. Not even two and a half minutes on the clock. It is exactly what we were looking for in this match. The perfect early start. We've dominated them from minute one so far. And it's Daniel Johnson with an absolute world. His ninth goal of the season. It feels like he's not really been involved all too much for us. But since his arrival from Preston last season, he has been absolutely fantastic. And as it stands, we have got 100 points. We need to win this match. We want that 100 points. It looks absolutely beautiful to see. And we just, again, just think about the position we were in last season with our minus 12 point deduction. I think even if we would have had the minus 21 points, we would have stayed up, I do believe. Obviously, we started to save when Derby only had the minus 12 points. They, didn't, they did then get a further nine point deducted. Sam Surridge has scored 35 goals this season, and it's Derby 1, Stoke 1. Not ideal there. A defence has fallen asleep, which is... Not ideal. I don't really know what we're doing there. I mean, that's poor from Sessignon just to allow Campbell to run. And then no one's tracking the run of Baba Rahman. He gets the ball into the box. Surridge is completely unmarked. And he taps in past Di Gregorio. And we were ahead for, what, about six minutes there? Unfortunately. As it stands as well, Barnsley are winning. So it does mean we drop back to second in the table. We need to go and get another goal. You know what? We're going on attacking because we absolutely... We need 100 points. We need to win the title. So... We're not having this. If we lose, it's not the end of the world, but we do need to win. Knight on the ball, carrying it forward. He goes into Sibley, in on goal. Can he finish? Shoots off the post. Oh, my God. That's a really good opportunity there for Louis Sibley. He's unable to convert. That's a really good chance. I mean, Stoke haven't really created all too much so far in this match. Jason Knight is looking absolutely shattered, but I don't really want to get him off to be honest. If anything happens, we'll probably put Johnson a bit deeper and bring Troy Parrott on because we need another goal. They're recommending we do bring Troy Parrott on anyway. Just approaching half time, we've absolutely dominated them from the first whistle, and we've somehow not managed to score. And the second goal, Bursic goes long. Surridge can't win the header. Sorensen wins it, and he finds Johnson looking over the top here for Camille Joswiak. A little bit of space. Can he get a ball into the box? He cuts back. It's a really poor pass into Buchanan. That is exactly not what he should be doing if he does want to reclaim his spot in this side. Clark finds Jason Knight. Again, such a waste of possession there. He had so much space to run into. And he just aimlessly lumps it forward. Completely unnecessary there. Van der Berg on the ball now for Stoke. Goes out wide to Baba Rahman. Sessignon. Wins the ball back, but it falls straight, unfortunately, to Campbell. Baba carrying the ball forward here. I think he's got Knight on his tail, I'm pretty sure. Can't get a block, though. Baba on the ball. It's actually Sibley, sorry. Campbell now plays it inside. Tackle comes in. Still with Baba. Ball comes in. Surridge is there. Great save. But Onel Hernandez is there. Two tap home. And it's Derby County 1, Stoke City 2. We're just on the beach. We are on the beach, already celebrating. Defensively, we've been in absolute shambles in this match. It's been an absolute disgrace. I don't want to watch that defending again because it's an absolute joke. Right, what was that? Get your act together and start playing football. We're going to tell him to exploit the wide areas, get the overlaps on as well. We're going to get the, the wing... We need two goals, don't we? So we're going to get the wing backs to attack, get them higher up the pitch, get them some crosses in to the box. We need to get Knight off, to be honest with you. Um, We're going to put Johnson... There, and we'll put him there. Put him as a roaming playmaker. We'll tell Bird as well to be more of a, more of a Carrillero, whatever it's called. We'll get Troy Parrot on as well then for Jason Knight as the pressing forward. We also really need to get Johnson off, but we don't need to do that yet. We'll probably put Sibley as that playmaker then and put Unlundulu on the right wing. We really need to give him some encouragement. We need a goal. We've gone more attacking at the break. I mean, I don't know how, but somehow Stoke are winning this football match. Not a great start, though. Nothing's happened in that first 10 minutes, so you know what? We're going to make that change. Sibley can go as the roaming playmaker. We'll get Unlundu on on that right wing, see what he can do. I mean, if Joswek doesn't step his game up, we're going to have to get Faraguia on as well, aren't we? Well, I'll wait another 10 minutes or so for that. We'll give him some more encouragement. We're going to have to go very attacking. We literally just need to go all out attack. We need a goal. This has to be a goal for Derby County. Campbell on the ball. He goes down the line to Baba. He's had so much space on his left-hand side. Can he get a ball into the box? He cuts it back to Thompson. A little bit of space and he goes back to Baba. 
Ball comes into the box now towards the back post. Surridge is there. This time it's a good save from Di Gregorio. I think the similar thing happened in the last match when we played Stoke. Sam Surridge absolutely bullied our defenders and we just couldn't cope with it. Di Gregorio goes long looking for Parrott who doesn't win the header but the ball falls to Unlandulu. He goes back to Sessignon, cuts inside, looking for that ball over the top. It's a really poor ball though and Kafkat can easily head that back to Bursic. He was going to kick it long looking for Surridge. Oh my god, he's completely unchallenged. What is Matt Clark doing? It's a good recovery tackle, but there's no way he should be allowed that much time. Hernandez now, ball comes in. Surridge is completely unmarked. This time it's another excellent save from Di Gregorio. We need a goal back and we need one back now. Come on, one last push. We're going to demand some more from them. Sibley, ball in. It's a shocking ball in. What on earth is that? That is absolutely terrible. Setting on as well to win the ball. Can he get a ball into the box? He does. Good ball in. It's come to Joswiak, cuts it back, Moniz, blocked off the line. How has that not gone in? Oh my god, right, final change, we're going to have to get Faraguir on. You know what we're going to do, we're going to bring Sibley off and we're just going to go with another attacking midfielder. What we'll actually do is put Joswiak on the right, Unlandulu is going to go up front, if it, the game's going to let me, there we go. We're going to put Unlandulu as a target man. Um, he can't really do a target man, he can do much more of a pressing forward and then we'll put Parrot. As a uh, as an advanced forward, which means we'll change Moniz to be... Uh, we'll keep them as two advanced forwards, to be honest with you. Faraguia and Joswek, just to be normal wingers. Bird is... I mean, he's pretty isolated there, isn't he? We'll get Sessignon. Um, he can't really play as brilliant. He can't really play there, to be honest. Well, Buchanan can play as a left wing back, can't he? Get him to play higher. Um, we just need to get the ball higher up the pitch, to be honest with you. I don't really know what the best thing to do for that is. But we need, we need two goals in 15 minutes. And right now, we don't look like scoring at all, to be honest. As the ball comes in there, cleared by Sessignon. Joswiak looking over the top for Moniz. We've got a lot of players forward here. What can he do with it? Unlandulu's completely unmarked. If he puts the ball into the box, he does. Unlandulu! Moniz should be playing that so much sooner. He gave him such a hard chance. That's really, really disappointing. Clark with a good header there. Buchanan brings it down. Come on, let's go get a goal now. Play it. He plays it into Faraguir. Can he get a ball into the box? He cuts it back to Buchanan. He gets a ball in. Bird brings it down. Cuts it back to Buchanan. Ball comes in. Moniz there. Bit of space. Buchanan. Ball in. Faragui. Come on. Get the ball. Get the ball. Faragui with his fourth goal of the season. Fantastic. 13 minutes left on the clock. We still need one more. Come on. It's really good play from us. It's a thoroughly deserved goal. They just couldn't deal with the overload, to be honest. It's a good one, too, between Moniz and Buchanan. Ball comes in. Faraguia is never missing from there. And there is a little bit of time left for us to go and find a winner if we don't concede here, though. Sorensen with the clearance, and he finds Parrott. No one's really supporting him, so he's just going to go alone. Troy Parrott carrying the ball forwards for Derby County into the penalty area. He's done very well there as Parrott. Ball comes in. Unlandulu! It's in! It's Derby County 3, Stoke City 2. We have turned it around at Pride Park. With eight minutes left on the clock, the two lone players off the bench combining. And this is why you should always play with three strikers. The overload was too much for Stoke to deal with. Parrott does excellent. As we have a little voice crack there. Puts a great ball in. Unlundulu with the finish. And now we just need to see the game out. Park the bloody bus. Get every man behind the ball if possible. And just absolutely park the bus now. We'll let them free up front. Do what they need to do. And then we'll just defend for our lives now. We just need to get them as defensive fullbacks. Get everybody behind the ball. Get Clark just to, just to clear the ball long now. Get them both just to defend. We need the passing to be really long. Tempo to be really low. Time wasting. We need to do that whenever possible. And just hopefully now try and see the game out. We have turned it around though. Two substitutes with the goals. And there's not long left to go now. Four minutes of added time. Can we see the game out? Crazy drama at the end in today's match. And it's full time. Derby County 2. Uh, Derby County 3, sorry. Stoke City 2. We are championship champions. We finished the season with 100 points. And we are crowned with our trophy. Thoroughly deserved. Well done, everyone. Enjoy your celebrations. For some reason, that's not really what they wanted to hear, to be honest. But... Absolutely superb. I couldn't have asked for much more, to be honest. The defending at times was really poor, but we finished with 100 points. Luton, and MK Dons and QPR all go down. Us and Barnsley go up in automatic promotion, and Brentford, West Brom, Norwich and Swansea will fight it out for that playoff spot. Absolutely fantastic, and that is exactly what we were looking for. 
it just looks beautiful, doesn't it? 100 points, 32 wins from 46 matches, 4 draws, 10 defeats, which was actually the most in the top 5, 6 teams. But at the end of the day, we've won the most matches, we've accumulated the most points, we finish with 100 points, we win the Skybet Championship, and it's just what we love to see. Here we have it then, we have our 2022-23 end of season review. If we have a look at the new arrivals, I mean, a lot of them we didn't really expect to do very well for us this season. Um, but Rodrigo Moniz, definitely the star of the show. Only got a C, though, because the wage contribution is acceptable, but the loan fee is far too high for a player of his ability. He has literally single-handedly got us promoted 32 goals in 41 appearances. Forrest is nine man of the matches, averaging a 7.37. He was absolutely fantastic. He was absolutely incredible. Uh, Steven Sessegnon did well. He got a C+. Unland Dulu got an A+. Plus. I mean, he wasn't great. Five starts, 14 sub-appearances. I mean, to be fair, eight goal contributions in five starts is not terrible. Getcha, I mean, he he was okay, but that's about it, to be honest with you. Three-star current ability. I mean, he has a lot of potential, but yeah, wasn't wasn't really much better. I mean, he, in hindsight, if he would have been our player, I definitely would have played him a lot more, but there was no real choice in playing him, to be honest with you. 12 goal contributions in four starts for Troy Parrott. Faragui was fantastic, 12 goal contributions in 11 starts. Beck Sorensen, to be fair, did pretty well, averaging over a seven as well. I mean, we paid a £2 million low fee for him, and he did the job in the end. Di Gregorio got a B-, minus. he was fantastic, 38 games for him. Eduardo did pretty decent as well, he got an A, 45 games for him. Matt Clark, for £1.3 million was a steal, 38 appearances in total for him. Fran Marida somehow played 12 matches. Tom Pierce, I mean, he wasn't great, to be honest with you. Uh, Ioni as well. For the money that we paid for Ioni, two and a half million pounds, he was not great. He'll probably be going out on loan, to be honest with you. Kunze was all right at times. Um, Reese Devine was, yeah, not the greatest. And Jack Rolls, I mean, he did all right, to be fair. But anyway... That was, uh, yeah, that's the uh, the new arrivals. If you have a look at the season review, then the board are delighted that the team won the Skybet Championship uh, this season. We finish as champions. Absolutely beautiful to see. I mean, this run that we went on from October to December was absolutely fantastic. I mean, even this one here from February down to pretty much March. What's that? One loss in two months. Fantastic. I mean, even towards the end of the season, we only lost one match out of our last, what's that? Two, four, seven. We only lost one out of our last seven. We were fantastic. Our biggest win were a 4-0 win away at Middlesbrough. Our match to remember was a 5-2 pummeling against our rivals. And the goal of the season went to Rodrigo Moniz uh, when we beat, uh, when, sorry, when we drew 2-2 with Hull City. If we have a look at the finances, I mean, not great. Sibley sold the most amount of shirts. Johnson, Joswiak, Knight, and somehow Rolls is on there as well. So, yeah, our revenue is on the down, but only just, to be honest with you. Our broadcast revenue is definitely on the up, because obviously we played a lot more matches on TV. If we have a look at the team that I picked then, it's Di Gregorio in goal, a back four of Burn, uh, Eduardo, Clark, and Buchanan. Knight and Bird in the midfield. Sibley on the right, Joswiak on the left, and Johnson in behind Rodrigo Moniz. To be honest with you, they're all absolutely fantastic. I mean, oh, he's, he's done the goals and assists wrong way around. 15 assists for Joswiak is fantastic. 10 for Sibley. 8 for Jason Knight, to be honest. That's a lot more than I expected. Obviously, Bielik must have been out for a long time then to say Knight played all too much. If you have a look at the accolades then, um, I won manager of the month for September, and that was it, to be honest with you. Most assists, we have some record break because most assists by a player in a season, Joswex got 15. Um, the fans player of the season went to Moniz, young player of the season Moniz, sign of the season Di Gregorio, goal of the season Moniz, top scorer Moniz, most assists Joswiak, most man of the matches was Moniz, highest average rating was Moniz, and the worst discipline uh, was Christian Bielik, 16 yellow cards and one red for him. Uh, most passes completed per 90 was Christian Bielik, he averaged 54 passes per 90. History in the making, Derby or everything to a fantastic start to the season, that kick started, and unlike promo promotion push, that is very true to be honest with you and that is it that is the end of the saved money with you as i said we will be doing some live streams over on my twitch so make sure you stay tuned for that i don't really want to advance too much far forward i do i'm looking forward to the premier league save so make sure you are following me over on twitch they want us to minimum or maximum one year contract for players over the age of 34 and work within the wage budget no worries they want us to fight bravely against relegation so we'll accept that current vision i mean end of team meeting we just need to try and fight bravely against relegation. Uh, proud of your efforts. Um, I'm up to basically that we can not avoid the fight. Um, oh, why are you putting all that pressure on us? It's not fair. Well, that's not. 
not gone very well. There we go. That's that's done a much better. I don't really want to make too many promises for now. We'll see them all back in pre-season. Most of these players won't be here anyway. Training camp destination. We are going to go to... Yeah, let's go to the East Midlands. We'll go to Switzerland. I feel like that would be a nice place to go to, to be honest with you. But that is where I'm going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed the final proper episode of this save a like as always will be massively appreciated if you could try and hit 15 likes for the end that would be absolutely class subscribe if you are new as well we are on the road to 200 subscribers so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already we have a new scouting budget as well can we put that on uh, the recruitment package yeah put it on the world because we're in the premier league i'll see you all later though thank you for watching have a great rest of your day i'll see you all very soon for another one peace